Good morning. Hi again, it's Deacon Don, and it's April 24th. I believe it's Friday, but given the fact that most days look exactly alike, I wasn't sure, but I checked the calendar. It's Friday. There's no, there's no magic here in terms of thinking about the situation that we're in. We've heard so much about COVID-19. We've probably heard more than we want to hear to the point where maybe we just want to turn off the news. So I'm not going to burden you anymore with things that you've already heard. But I do want to take a few minutes to approach this reflection a little bit differently than normal and not concentrate so much on what the scriptures are, although they will come in. But instead on asking you and myself some questions that I think are important for us to ask of ourselves now. Relax, this isn't a quiz. You're not going to be asked to hand in any homework, even though I've been known to ask for things like that. But they are just quick questions that I feel are important to reflect on, as I have done too. So given the COVID-19 pandemic in our world, in our place here in Western Pennsylvania, I asked myself these questions. What have we experienced? What have we lost? What have we learned? Perhaps what have we gained? First of all, I think the overwhelming thing that we've experienced is fear. Fear in so many ways. Fear that's being driven by uncertainty. I think most people are afraid of things if they're uncertain what it is. Fear about the threats on our health. Concern over our family and our friends. Worry about the loss of jobs and perhaps even more. The practice of hoarding that we've seen. I know it's senseless, but fear isn't always logical, is it? We've experienced anger. Anger mostly driven by helplessness. That's where it normally comes from. Anger because we're forced not to work. We're told what we can do, what we can't do. Often, as humans, we feel, I could handle this all myself. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really don't need anyone else to help me. We rebel against what we can't control. Nature. Governmental authority. It's kind of human nature to do something like that, isn't it? And we get angry. Maybe because of the quarantine, we get angry because we're getting on each other's nerves, or even on our own nerves. I know in my household, we love each other very much, but being so close together for long periods of time without release, well, you can get pretty much on each other's nerve pretty easily. Huh? You got to be careful with that. So next, what have we lost? I think we've lost direct contact with people that face-to-face -face physical contact that most people crave, including myself. We've lost income, I and mean, for some that is so severe and definitely life-threatening. And in some people's minds, maybe, maybe many people's minds, we've lost freedom. I'm not gonna get into that now, that's for another time. But one of the things I feel we've lost, a major item, is we've lost our innocence. When we think that nothing can hurt us, nothing can harm us, that we can do things all by ourselves. We've lived in generations, luckily, that have not really had to deal with national adversity where everyone is affected. I, I understand had some very serious national tragedies in our lifetime. But I think we've never really had to deal with an adversity that covers everybody all day, all day long. And I think that's difficult for us. Now, this isn't a value judgment. It's just a statement, a fact, because I believe that it's something that we have difficulty in dealing with. So based on that, 
what have we learned and what have we gained? Well, for me, we've gained an awful lot of quiet time. Things have slowed down a good bit. We've reconnected with family. We found simple things of value, like having dinner with each other every night. We've learned how to do things that we never had time to do before. A hobby, whatever. We've concentrated on caring not only for ourselves, but for others. We see so many good people step up to help us. Everybody in the medical profession, for example, who are there all day, who have who've sacrificed their own lives, their own health, and their own families to help you and to help me. But I think we've also found resilience in dealing with problems. I think we've had to. And I think we've also gained a confidence to deal with adversity. Something we never had to really worry about before. I think we've regained patience. I think we've found a common good. And I think we have also learned that we can't always do things on our own. We've come to learn to rely on someone else, something more than ourselves. Today's Gospel is from John, and he talks to us about <clears throat> Jesus' miracle of feeding the 5,000. And the point there is that when it seems impossible, God provides us the means. He provides us the talent, the will, the wisdom, the strength to find a way. Then it was five loaves and fishes, wasn't it? <clears throat> now what is it? Look around the world and you can see the things that he's provided to us to find a way when things seem impossible. But we've also found once again, a reliance on God and recognizing that Jesus Christ is in every aspect of our lives. Things that we have forgotten or failed to see in the past, we're seeing once again. And I think that's really a wonderful game. Brothers and sisters, this crisis will end, hopefully sooner than later. But let's not let the things that we've experienced and the things that we've lost and the things that we've gained and learned, let's not let them disappear with the crisis. Let's not let them go away from our conscious once this crisis is over. We need to remember them. So take a moment to think about these questions that we've talked about and recognize God in our lives something we'll see more of in Sunday's gospel and the scripture that we'll be reading, be seeing in that Sunday Mass. Brothers and sisters, I'm convinced we are very good people, especially when we recognize that Jesus is with us. Remember he said, do not let your heart be troubled. Have faith in me. Earlier, we spoke of uncertainty. Be certain with God. I want to end this brief reflection with a quote from St. Teresa of Calcutta. She has such wonderful short quotes that mean so much to each of us. And this one's very simple. This one says, love begins by taking care of the closest ones, the ones at home. So whatever your home is to you, whether it's a house with your family, or whether it's a community, even with strangers, love starts there. So be safe, practice prudence and not fear. Because remember, God is with us every step of the way. God bless.